Yeah, all right, let's start. So it seems everybody uh, is, is not the first time have been to Lunch and Learn. Uh, welcome again, uh, old friends. We're all old friends here now. So I will skip the introduction of myself and uh, Yong Chang is here. I'm, I'm at China Institute, I'm at Huamei. Yong Chang, where are you? Yeah, I'm in the library. Uh, so it's it's been a while while we've been back to office. Oh, now you can see shit. Let me turn the camera a little bit more. Uh, so um, yeah, we, we've been back in person and we have a few in-person programs that's coming up. I can see we are still having a couple of uh, participants joining. Yeah, so while well, I'm looking forward, today is our last lunch and learn session for the season, for the spring. Oh. And after this one, uh, we actually <laughs> will have a gathering at China Institute. Uh, so let me share the screen. I mentioned this last time. Like before, we will look into one poem and we will read the poem together, learn something about Chinese history, art, and, um, and learn to write one character. Uh, so you show any the bee, you You've prepared your pen or brush or any kind of writing pad you have. Now, today we are reading Qian Jun Hou Chi Jue Ju at the back pond. I don't know how the fuck they talk to each Du Mu. Yeah, I can hear. Uh, there are still uh, friends joining in, maybe new to China Institute to lunch and learn. Uh, so, this is our last session for spring season. My name is Shen Zhan. I'm the host here with my co-host, Yong Chang Lin, Lin Lao Shi. Uh, so here we are, please, uh, just a, a few um, uh, housekeeping. Uh, if you could uh, mute yourself, uh, I will invite you to open your mic uh, during the read aloud uh, so that we can hear you. But uh, as I'm, uh, or uh, we are uh, learning and presenting, uh, if you could mute yourself, I'd appreciate. Also, we have the chat box that Lin Lao Shi is managing. If you have questions or comments, feel free to put in your uh, comments or questions in the chat box uh, throughout the lunch and learn session. 好吧,那今天我们就开始. Uh, I just mentioned oh, we, I'm here at China Institute. We are back in person and this is I would say this is one of our earliest in-person program, May 18th. This is really, really going to be an in-person version of our extended Lunch and Learn. We are going to read three of the poems we have learned about through our Lunch and Learn online. But the difference is we will not only read aloud together, we will have live music with three musicians with pipa, gu qin, um, flute, di zi, and also we are inviting a uh, guitarist to join. So there's really a cross-cultural integration there. And also a calligrapher whose writing is much, much, much better than, than mine <laughs> will be present at the um, program so that we all will get to practice calligraphy. We will prepare brush and uh, ink as well as rice paper for everyone. So there, it's going to be a uh, all around immersive uh, Chinese cultural gathering, Hua Mei Ya Ju, uh, linked to a tradition that scholars uh, or culturally oriented people in China's tradition would gather together periodically to enjoy uh, many elements of Chinese culture, but poems, art, calligraphy, and music are always 
the fundamental elements of those gatherings. So we are trying to do that along the Hudson River. All right. So now today we are reading Qi An Jun, Hou Chi Jue Ju by Du Mu. You may wonder, there are seven characters in the Chinese title, why the English title is so simple and short. Uh, because the first three, Qi An Jun, is the name where the pond is. And the translator, our own beloved senior lecturer, Ben Wang, Wang Lao Shi, he just submitted the, uh, the, 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 the name of the location just at the back pond. Uh, that's the Hou Chi part. Jue Ju is the genre of this poem. It's a quatrain. By Du Mu. So very briefly about Du Mu, born in 803, which in general considered to be mid or late Tang dynasty. Uh, some of you may know about Tang history after the grand glorious High Tang period, which ended around mid eighth century. Uh, Tang Empire was greatly weakened by the famous or infamous An Lushan Rebellion, lasted from 755 to 763. I feel I mentioned An Lushan Rebellion multiple times when we are reading Tang poem. Uh, does anyone want to, uh, want to share your knowledge about An Lushan Rebellion? Is everybody familiar with this? No. Historical event. I have my notes here. I'm happy to share, just in case I, anyone. Can I guess? I feel I remember the name a lot, but did it have something to do with maybe like Mongolians? I could be wrong. <laughs> You're in the right direction. Uh, it's not Mongolian. It's uh, okay. it's but it's in the northwest part of China. Yeah. So An Lushan is the name of a Tang general with Sogdian and Turkic origin, favored by the Tang Emperor Xuanzong at the time and his con consort, Lady Yang, Yang Guifei. And he was given the power to control the Northwest region. And now it's, it's, it's largely the, uh, the Uyghurs region of China at the time. Um, so with tremendous strong and powerful armies. However, over time, An Lushan's position uh, due to the internal conflicts and politics of the Tang court, especially with the Yang family, that's the, the emperor's consort, uh, Lady Yang's family. And eventually An Lushan felt very threatened uh, and triggered him to revolt in 755. His army, um, in fact, forced the Tang Emperor fled the capital Chang'an and with his most beloved consort, Lady Yang. Famously, the Emperor's army was so angry with Lady Yang's family and would refuse to move until the Emperor ordered Lady Yang to take her own life. So Emperor Xuanzong, without much choice, did order her death the army continued, yet the rebellion didn't end until 763. The emperor, um, actually it went through three different emperors of the Tang Empire to end the rebellion. And one would imagine the eight year political and the military chaos significantly weakened the Tang Empire and also reflected in literature, art, historical records, literally the story of the Tang Emperor Xuanzong and Lady Yang became the source of inspiration to many Chinese literature, art at the time and even until today. Some of you may have read Bai Ji Yi, also a famous uh, late Tang Dynasty poet. And he has, he wrote 
a ballad of everlasting sorrow, Chang Heng Ge, that's related to the story. And some of you, if you are watching uh, Chinese drama, in 2019, there was a popular drama in China that's called Chang'an Shi Er Shi Chen, 12 time slots in Chang'an. That's also inspired by the story. So this is a very brief introduction of the An Lushan Rebellion. But when we talk about Tang Dynasty, oftentimes Tang Dynasty was divided into several periods and between the Hai Tang period, that was before the An Lushan Rebellion, everything perceived to be much, grand, much more grander and like Li Bai and Du Fu and many other great Tang poets were belonging to that Hai Tang period. There are many great poets and famous poems after Hai Tang, and that's the mid and the late uh, Tang dynasty. But generally speaking, poems in mid or late Tang dynasty are not considered to have the same kind of admiration and literary status as Hai Tang. However, the poet we are reading today, um, Du Mu, uh, is notably one of the, the best and the most known poets during those period. So while I, this is not the first poem we read, we read about Du Mu's Shan Xing. Um, it's the, the, the one about the autumn, talking about the red leaves, the foliage into the mountain. Uh, so some of you may have known his background, but just very briefly, he came from a very uh, prominent family. His, gra his grandfather was a minister at the Tang court and a scholar responsible for compiling the Tang dynasty and, um, um, encyclopedia, Tongdian. So we can uh, picture that he's very well educated, yet by Du Mu's time, his family have been declining. He passed the official exam, uh, the, the official exam that would allow anybody to study and eventually to get into the imperial court if you have successfully passed several exams. He at the young age of 25 actually be, uh, got the uh, a high rank, it's the presented scholar through exams that's supposedly supervised by the emperor himself in Chang'an, but however, his political or his official career hasn't been quite successful. He held a series of minor posts, but never rose to a high profile position in the court like his grandfather, but that was his sort of um, inspiration. Today, Du Mu is known by his poems, especially quatrains, like the one we're going to read today, four lines compacted with colors, emotions, and meanings, subtly, and we can see in this poem, we will talk a little bit about that, subtly underlining his regrets and heartbreaks in life. Uh, so this one is an example. Uh, it's not a, his most famous quatrains, but very timely, that's one reason we chose for today as well you can, I would invite you to look at the um, English translation as we will not go word by word. But this poem is about early summer. And I hope, I hope finally summer is coming, spring is in full, mm -hmm. uh, full wind and summer is coming, even though it's a little bit, um, uh, we have a little rain today, and in this poem, we have some drizzles, too. So let me read the entire poem first, and then we will go word by word, line by line. Qi an jun, hou chi jue ju. Ling tou fu ping, lü jing chi. Xia ying qian zhuan, nong qiang wei. 
，近日无人看微雨，鸳鸯相对玉红衣。Quatrains are perfect for our lunch and learn. Um, actually, we particularly choose uh, quatrains or regulated verse because there are only four or eight lines either five or seven characters for each line that will we have allow us to have enough time to cover. Otherwise the ballads or other poems will be too much to cover within this short one hour. So now let's do this together. Uh, let me see how many people we have. We have like a little over 30. So maybe if you want, you can open your mic so I can hear everyone. Uh, unless, well, there's terrible feedback and then I perhaps would have to ask you to turn it back uh, off. But let's try first, how about that? Okay, I will read twice the first time. I will pause after each character. The second time I will read the entire line and I will pause so that everybody can read. All right, here we go. Ling. 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 So this one, just just pay attention. That's the u. So if you pronounce, it's not a u, even though the shape of the lips are very much similar. So for this one, the trick is you can pronounce e first, and then push the lips forward. E u. So there is an e sound in it. U. Yeah. Yeah, Ling 弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄弄
Okay, okay this one. So this one is is um, it, it's tricky because even though you it looks exactly, it's a wu there, but because it's after a y, it's pronounced as the same with the two dots on top of it. So next, Yuan, So keep it high up there. Entire line. Yuan Yang Xiang Yang So here we have Mandarin ducks. Yuan Yang. You see the this 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 character. Zhida shi shen ma ma. Mandarin ducks, yeah, the female, yeah, yeah. Yang, the, the male. So Yuan and Yang both are the Mandarin ducks, but refer to different gender. Hmm. So in Chinese culture, Mandarin ducks, the male and the female birds, it has a particular meaning, cultural meaning. Because well, oh. the Anyone? It's a couple. It's a couple. You're like sweet, like a little couple. It's a couple. Love. It's love. Right, love, couple. Because Yuan Yang, well, if you know, I, I only know this about Yuan Yang because of the culture meaning. <laughs> uh, they tend to, the male and the females tend to stay with each other for the rest of their life, right? Uh, unlike the, the, the yin, so we have two birds here, two kinds of birds here, Xia Ying, and then you have Yuan Yang, right? So there's always that kind of the, um, the in pairs, either the meaning are reinforcing each other or opposite to each other. So in, even in this uh, short quatrain, you have two birds that with by nature, uh, at least in this poem, referred uh, very different culturally. So Yuan Yang, because, well, they yeah. tend to stay together throughout their lives, the symbols of loyal love between couples in Chinese culture. And here I highlighted Hong. Hong. So, oh. so, what, so what do you think this color is here? What think, meaning it can be? I think it's because of, um, the wedding ceremony, the wearing the red clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So in a traditional Chinese wedding, you're always, the couples are in red. So here, not only Yuan Yang, by nature, it, it color, their colors yeah. can be red. They are, they are colorful, they are actually colorful birds. Um, but while, to specifically refer to the red wedding clothing for the couple. And then that's the reason knowing that, and you already know that, we would understand in Chinese culture, especially if you encounter Chinese paintings, Yuan Yang tends to be one of the artist's favorite birds, as long as love stays the theme of the art. Right? <laughs> yeah. This painting, <laughs> oops. This painting, Liu Li Shang and Yu Zhi Zhen, they happen to be a couple actually. Um, they, they, they are known in painting birds and flowers. And this particular meticulously tracing the details and almost like a picture like um, style, uh, it's Gong Bi Hua. 
it's really uh, one major style. And then uh, uh, just a, 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 a sort of a preliminary announcement at China Institute, we're going to have a birds and flower exhibition in this coming spring, 2023. So uh, there will be more original Chinese paintings on birds and flowers then at China Institute, just next door to this library. Uh, uh, so welcome everyone to, and, and also we will um, go through more uh, birds and flowers in terms of art, literature, and many other topics at the time when the exhibition is on. Uh, so Liu Lishang and Yu Zhizhen, they both are uh, students of Zhang Daqian. Mm. Mm. Some of you may know Zhang Daqian. Zhang Daqian, uh, of course. He's, yeah, he's one of the most famous Chinese artists in the Western, knowing that perhaps one, one of them in the Western world since early 20th century. This painting with exactly the same flowers. So what flowers here are here? This is Lotus. 对的,荷花, Lotus. So, 荷花和鸳鸯在一起有什么含义吗? The Lotus. The Lotus, is like it grows up out of the dirt. So it has to do with like purity and stuff like that, right? Because it's like, it's pure, but it grows out of like, you know, like dirtiness. And water. Grows yeah. out of the water. Right. It's a, it's a mud and then yeah, the water. Yeah. So, the, so the, the, the water purifies the flowers. So absolutely, it has that kind of pure uh, purity meaning. Uh, in Hehua, in the lotus cultural meaning. There is also another layer that's particularly related to Yuanyang. Anyone? Because in Chinese culture, we, all, we often say Bing Ti Lian, like the lotus, well, they share the same roots. The flowers will grow out. They share the same roots, and oftentimes, well, you you see um, a couple of flowers growing out together, right next to each other. So they are also the symbol of love, and particularly going with Yuan Yang. And in this, we can see that's oftentimes the Hehua and the Yuan Yang a very common theme in birds and flowers. And Yuan Yang also sometimes would go with some other flowers, but in this particular two paintings I chose, well, they happen to be both with the lotus. So knowing that, let's take a look at the poem in its entirety again. The first, Pretty much, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely picture of an early summer day at the pond with the drizzles. And you have so many different colors that's just blossoming and thriving in this scene, right? What colors can you see? Green. Any other? What is Lin? Green, blue green. Yeah, blue green. Blue green. Yeah. Fu Pin, the dark weeds, they are floating on mm. the surface of the water, right? And then Lin is that the water chestnut. It's the, it's the, it's the um, also in the water, just picking out. They can be green and with a little bit of pinkish on the top, different layers of colors. And then you have, what is this? Wei Yu. Oh, Jiga, Jiga. 
，微雨的上面 ，roses， 蔷薇。Wild roses. Yeah, so you could picture different layers of pink or red, and then of course Yuan Yang and its Owen, well, are quite colorful themselves, right? Especially the male. So yeah, so this this one it just gives you the eye a, a all sorts of different colors coming together, and then there is a little bit of the melancholy that no one is watching all of this thriving, yet the lives are all at this pond. But well, I mean that's just how I feel it. You may have a very different feeling. When you look at this picture, and maybe hearing Xia Ying and the Yuan Yang have different songs in this pic, in this picture as well, right? Okay, so let's read the entire poem together, and then I will go into the writing part. 好吧，要不林老师。Lin Lao would you like to lead the reader aloud? Kai, Kai. Okay, let oh, we read So let's read it together. So from the title, Qi An Yun, Hou Shi Jue Ju. Qi An Yun, Hou Shi Jue Ju. 很好 ，Yeah, you can open your Mac and read after me. 好，零透浮萍，零透浮萍，绿锦池，绿锦池，夏英千转，夏英千转，弄蔷薇。No, no, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, should we read it one more time? So the whole line together. Okay, let's start again from the poem, uh, from the title. Qi An Jun Hou Chi Jue Ju. Qi An Jun Hou Chi Jue Ju. Du Mu. Du Mu. Du Mu. Du Mu. Ling Tou. 浮萍绿锦池，杨后后，绿锦绿锦池，呀，绿绿锦池，绿绿锦池，很好。夏英，夏英 ，Yeah, it's better for us to read in the one character, the one. So, 千转。千转，弄蔷薇，弄蔷薇。近日，近日，无人，无人，看微雨，看微雨。鸳鸯，鸳鸯，相对，相对。玉红衣，玉红衣，很好，谢谢。们 ，very good， 很好，很好。谢，谢谢林老师。Yeah. All right. So, Liao, do you think do we have time to for the、uh, you know read it one more time for the whole line together? I think. Sure. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. Yeah. Let's read it one more time with the whole line together. Okay. Just try your best. So. Follow the rhythm and the sound. Qi An Jun Hou Chi Jue Ju. 
请不吝点赞下一天 Yes, how how very good. You're getting it better and better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. remember? you. Thank you. Thank you. 锦字的写法, this is the simplified, simplified version of Jin. Yeah, I, I, I chose this as well. You could imagine I was like emphasizing the different colors as in that line. That seems to be the one of the keywords in this poem, Jin. And if you look at the origin, well, this is not the oldest version. This is a version from Shou Wen Jie Zi, from about 75 to 100 AD. Um, and this is the book that I quoted many times. All the characters looking at the origin, that's old enough that we are looking at this first book in China's history, looking at the etymology of Chinese characters. Of course, the explanation um, is already including the scholar Xu Shen's own explanation or sometimes maybe imagination in it. Um, but well, he's much closer to the origin. Okay, so this one, we can see it has how many parts? <laughs> how many parts? This is mm. this is more of a complex character, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you could count two parts, but you could also count three because like the character for white, you could count, you know, and then the other, mm -hmm. the one that's, I think it's like, like a towel, I don't know, or something like a cloth. Right. Like, what, what, and then there's gold or like metal on the other side there. Yeah, so it's it's very clearly there is a left and right, right? The left part, this is the metal part, Jin, mm -hmm. and then the right part, on its own, it's a character. It's Bo. And, and Xiaoan is right. You could also further dissect this character into two parts, mm -hmm. right? The top part is like Bai. Bye. The bottom part is Jin, like Mao Jin, towel. It's this gene. So what I find, I discovered, well, this is also encouraging me to learn the etymology of Chinese characters. Very interestingly, if we look at the origin of each part, so the bottom part, Jin, in Xu Shen's time, it's Owen. It's a piece of cloth. Hmm. And then its etymology is pretty much pictographic. It draws like, I, I would imagine, you, you could imagine it's a piece of cloth hanging on a pole, on a line, or I would even imagine if you pick up a piece of cloth, it <laughs> would form a shape almost like this. It's very pictographic. And then the top, oops, the top part, Bai, we have learned this from our last character, B. Remember, there is the Bai 
component in the character B, the green, yes. bluish. Yeah, right. because, like the sun, and then we got the acid, like the sun comes up, it's like light, and you know, white's like a light color, so it's kind of related. Right. So this, I still tend to see that as a sagging sun, that the sun is not in its full circle when it's the sunrise time or very early in the morning or when it's the time of sunset. The sun is not as full, as bright, and has that kind of whitish color. And that's the color of Bai. And if you remember, I also mentioned that the color Bai is associated with the direction of the west. Xi Fang de Yanse, the direction of west. So I tend to picture that this is when the sunset that the sun is going back to the darkness or going under the horizon. This is almost like the horizon or the light is coming down to me. And then this is the, the, the when you look at the horizon and you can see the color. And if you consider this is the Tian, the sky, and this is the D, the earth, and that's the horizon in between. And that's when you would encounter that color. Bai. So together, they are the character Bo. That means the fabric without dying, before dying. So without color, when there's no, when the, the fabric is not colored, that is the word. A fabric that's just coming out without coloring. Mm. And then look at why we would have metal on the left side. Jin. So this is a character, if you look at the etymology, it's quite pictographic as well. There is, if you see in the middle, there is. This is what's that? Earth. 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 对的，土。嗯。So you have two earth there, and then you have different pieces of metal, and that's to depict the metals when they are underground in the earth, and and. In fact, in Chinese um, traditional knowledge, while、well, the metals are attributed to have five different colors, it's not always gold. Jin could be could mean gold, but Jin is also metal, the general term for metal. So metal actually has different colors. It could be gold. It could be silver. It could be black when it's bronze. And it could be the bronze color or even green. So Jin, not only in this character, the pronunciation is Jin, right? So Jin represents the pronunciation of the entire character, and it's related to the colorful meaning, and it adds color to this piece of fabric without color. And that's exactly what the meaning of jin. It's embroidered. It's the fabric that embroidered with different colorful threads. And that's the color we are encountering in this poem, jin. So, with that, are you ready to write the character? Now, woman. Oh. Sorry, let me just show the original. See, this is the even earlier version of the character Jin. Yeah, you have those indicating it's underground and it's in that different shape. 好，那我们准备好你们的笔了吗 ？I have my old. Oh, wait, where?、Uh, yeah, my old brush pen. That's 
cheating calligraphy because I don't have a calligraphy background, but what we can do the writing together. So get familiar with the writing structure. There is in fact a calligraphy class ongoing here right now at China Institute. So let me close this window, stop sharing. And Lin Lao Shi can actually make in the writing pad, Xie Zi Ban, the host. Baba. Yeah, it's done. Okay. Oh. Now let's write again. Let's write the original version together. Uh, let me. Go. So, can you see that? Okay, let's start from the left part, the metal part, the top. And then we do that. And then the different pieces of metal underground. So I, I would write this first and then to give the needle one a little bit better reference. And then the bottom part. Now I have a structure Then I would do the other two pieces. This is the left part, Jin. And then the right part, I will start from the top, the Bai. There's a little line on the top. That seems to be the light that's going away to me from the sun. Right? That's like the sun when it's not as bright. And then this is the part, it's a little challenging. I will do this left part first and then do the right part. Ah, it's a little too strong. So this line appeared to be a little um, thicker than the left part, which Ideally, I would avoid because for this style, xiao zhuan, it needs to be balanced and even throughout the entire character. All right, I would do the middle one. But again, that's the beautiful part of writing by hand. You cannot go back. It really captures your breath, your strength how you control your muscles and attention to details at that moment. All right, I would do the line, make it longer, and then the left. And then the right. All right, that is Jin. Can you show me your Jin? Xiao An, xie xie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, we can do a simplified version. Because the simplified version, basically, it's the left part, Jin. This in today's by itself, it's a character for metal or gold, right? And the simplified version would be like this. Jin. That's by its own a character. So for the simplified version of Jin, this part turn into this version. Also start from the 
becomes shorter. And then you have the two lines. And then you go down and going up. There's a tick. And that's finished in one stroke. And then the top part by left to the right, finish the middle line, close. And then again, the Qing part, the fabric. And then the very middle. Yeah. So that is our character today. Yeah. How the we are amazing on time. We even have a few minutes if you have any questions or anything yeah this is our uh i will see you in well you of course i hope i will see you in um in a couple of weeks may 18th at china institute i will be hosting the literati salon together with the calligrapher and the musicians lin laoshi will be there too um I would love to see you there, but of course, if you cannot make it, I will see you in September. We're going into a summer and we will take a break, um, but we will come back for the summer, uh, after the summer. Yeah. Please or... read the poem again. <laughs> That's a great suggestion. Okay, let's do it. Uh... <clears throat> Share. Okay. <coughs> 好吧，我们一起来读一遍。齐安俊，齐安俊，安俊，后迟绝句，后迟绝句。零透浮萍，零透浮萍，绿锦池，绿锦池，夏阴千转，夏阴千转，弄蔷薇，弄蔷薇，近日无人。近日无人看微雨，看微雨，鸳鸯相对，鸳鸯相对，玉红衣，玉红衣。好的 ，That's it. Well, talking about Yuan Yang and love, I have a really great poem about love. I would love to share in September. By Li Shangyin, some of you perhaps already know. Yeah. 